Hi folks. Welcome to the Ask the Farmer, Ask the Flower Farmer Live Q&A session. Um, my name is Dave Dowling and I'm doing the takeover today for Lisa so she can have the day off. This is where basically you will sit and talk for half an hour. You ask any questions you can think of and I'll do my best to answer them. Um, if you want to ask a question, in the bottom right of your screen, there's a little uh, circle with a question mark in it. That's where you want to put your question. That way I can make sure I catch them all. It's fine to make your comments, but please don't put the questions in the comments because there's sometimes so many notices of who's signed in and who's signed out and who's there that I'll miss the questions if they're not in the little bubble with a question mark in it. So if you put your questions there, I'll have a much better chance of getting your question answered and I'll be able to see it. Uh, we'll go for about a half an hour, uh, so about till one o'clock Eastern time. And a little bit about me, my name is Dave Dowling. I had a cut flower farm in Maryland for 20 years before I went to work for Edney Flower Bulb as a sales rep selling cut flower bulbs to people. And then the Fred C. Glockner company bought Edney around 2017, I think it was. Then in the fall of 2020, uh, the Fred Glockner company, the owner wanted to retire, so he sold the business to Ball Seed or Ball Horticulture, Ball Color Link. It's all the same interwoven companies. Um, so now I work for Ball Color Link as a sales rep and advisor to cut flower growers all across the US. And I also do an online class with the Gardener's Workshop called Bulbs, Perennials, Woodies, and More. It's uh, six sessions and registration will open up for that again this year in sometime in early June. If you're not on our wait list or on our email list for the Gardener's Workshop, just go to thegardenersworkshop.com, look for the online classes, look for the class called Bulbs, Perennials, Woodies, and More, and sign up to be on the wait list and that will be notified when registration is open again. So it looks like you got some questions here, so let's see what we got here. Uh, Wild Bunch Blossoms wants to know, what should I be feeding my ranunculus just before they bloom? Well, more important than what should you feed them is that you're watering them enough. Uh, once the ranunculus is up and bushy and the leaves are 12 or 18 inches tall, they need a lot of water, often two or three times a week. If they don't have enough water, they don't have enough uh, energy to push those flower stems and large flower buds up. So make sure we give them plenty of water. Other than that, any fertilizer that is a good um, equal blend, um, something like 10, 10, 10, or even a 10, 12, 10, something where the three numbers are about the same. But always before you do fertilizing, you should have done a soil test at some point. Sometimes you might have really high nutrient levels of a certain nutrient, like the high in phosphorus or potassium, and you don't want to add more of that if you already have excess of that nutrient. So always do a soil test first, and then you want to aim to get your um, uh, all three levels, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, up where they need to be. Ah, Pinky Winky Gal has a really good question here. Um, do coated seeds need to be used the first year purchased or will they last a few years? Coated seed will last just as long as uncoated seed. And what coated seed is, is where basically the seed companies add a, a film on them so they're, um, they flow better, they don't stick together. They're easier for the big growers to use in a seeding machine, like a vacuum seeder, because then they don't stick together. Especially a seed like a marigold, um, those actually take off a little fuzzy end on it and they uh, then coat them. The coating can be all different colors, yellow, blue, pink. Most of it's kind of a creamy white or yellow. Um, it doesn't affect the seed. It doesn't make them go bad sooner. So coated seeds can be saved just as long as an uncoated seed or a raw seed. Um, if you are holding your seeds from year to year or even just holding them this season until you get them planted, it's best to store them in a refrigerator. Um, some people even do a freezer, but I'm happy enough with a refrigerator. And use the Tupperware containers so they're sealed up. Nothing's worse than a paper envelope to store your seeds in because the envelope still breathes and they'll eventually dry out. So you try and lock any moisture that's in those seeds into the package so they don't dry out and dehydrate and lose their vigor. One thing that with uh, taking refrigerated seeds out or cold seeds out of the refrigerator is you don't want to take that cold package and walk into a warm tunnel or a greenhouse or even a humid house and open it up because it's just like a glass of iced tea. They're going to get condensation on the seeds and then you've got uh, moisture in the seeds that you don't want in the whole package because you're not 
most likely not planting all of them at once. So if you can be using seeds that have been in the refrigerator, take them out, let them warm up to room temperature, and then open the package up and use them. Um, Hay, Hel Hay Hill House wants to know, how long do you keep cut sunnies in the cooler? Um, I would not keep them more than about a week. And longer than that, um, they're going to start to lose some vase life. Plus, sunflower stems are uh, notoriously dirty. So you want to make sure you keep the water fresh and change the water at least a couple times during that week. Um, but with sunflowers, the most important thing is to pick them at the right stage, which is where you got your flower like this, and there's just one petal starting to lift up. You never want to pick a sunflower that's totally fully open in the field because you've lost a couple of days with the vase life. Not to mention you're most likely going to damage those petals by transporting them, putting them in a bucket, and carrying them around. So, um, Pink Stem Farm, she's in zone 7B. Her bells are tiny, so her bells of Ireland. Should I pull them up and plant something else that's going to get hot? Um, when you say they're tiny, it depends. When were they actually um, planted? Were they fall planted to overwinter as a cool flower or started really early this spring? Bells of Ireland can be a little slow to get started. And even if you overwinter them in zone 7B, they should still only have maybe an inch or two of height to them because um, they're only it's the middle of April now and they usually don't bloom until sometime later in uh, mid-May to even early June. So unless they're not showing any growth and not getting bigger week after week, um, I would give up on them. Um, but one thing I always like to say is plants are like kids. You don't see them growing unless you go away for a couple of weeks and then come back and, and see them. Or like your grandparents come to visit and my goodness how those grandchildren have grown. Take a picture of the Bells of Ireland and compare that picture in a week or 10 days and see if they've actually grown. So take a picture like the four plants at the end of the bed. Take the same picture in a week or 10 days and compare the two pictures. You'd be surprised. They probably are growing. Um, Marie is saying some of her Madam Butterfly, I'll see that went away. Hang on a second. There you go. Some of her Madam Butterfly snapdragons have three sets of leaves instead of true, including the true leaves. Appreciate input. Do you know if they will develop normal leaves or should I remove these plants? Not quite sure what you mean. Um, you got three sets of leaves instead of two. As long as the top is still growing, they should be fine. Um, and even if they just have two sets of leaves and the top dies, they'll still branch out. So I would not um, remove them yet. And like I said about the last one, take a picture and compare the picture in 10 days or two weeks and see if they're changing. But most likely, if it's still early in the season, um, they should grow and be fine. And Kay Twiggs says, I believe I have a bacterial fungus issue in my hoop house. Ranunculus stems are rotting and poor growth. How to move forward to next season, remove all the soil or spray. Um, first thing you should do is if you can get a test done. That, that means pulling up some of the bad plants and some of the uh, surrounding soil. And it's usually your state university does soil and plant diagnostic tests and have it tested to see what bacteria or fungus you have. It may be something that can be easily treated or it may be something that's just going to be there and the only option is to remove the soil. Or also if you're in a hoop house, sometimes you can cook it and uh, Heat sterilize the soil by putting clear or black plastic over it in the summertime and just close it up and let it cook for a few weeks until the soil temperature gets up, I think it's around 140 to 150 degrees. And that usually kills any soil pathogens that you do have. Um, it's important that you're watering with drip tape and not overhead. Um, so if you're doing overhead watering and you see brown or gray fuzzy mold, that's from really high humidity, could be drip, water dripping off the ceiling at night. Um, you should always have good air movement in a tunnel or greenhouse, which means rolling up the sides and letting the air blow through. Oh, here's one from Harris Flower Farm, Janice up in Canada. I don't care about saving my lily bulbs. Could I pull them from the crate like I pull the tulips, making raised beds for the lily because I'm running out of bulb crates because they're full of picked tulips? Yeah, if you're not going to save your lily bulbs, you could pull them when you harvest them, but most likely they're not going to pull because they got a really massive root system to where if you're to try and pull, the bulb is not going to come up. Um, so you, if you're, I would just go ahead and cut them off at the soil lever if, if you want to do that, but they're not going to pull the bulbs out of the crate because if you notice a crate grown lily has such a root mass, that it's even hard to break that soil up when you're finished with the lilies. Um, but she says she's running out of bulb crates because they are filled with picked tulips. So what she's doing, she's harvesting the tulips, storing them in the crates in the cooler 
um, until they all get sold. Uh, seed Life Farm. What is the maximum amount of time celosia seedlings can stay in the tray? I'll be planting them in a hoop house. Um, celosia seedlings are pretty quick to grow, especially if you have warm weather um, or warm growing areas. Um, you know, they want 70 degrees to germinate, and then if it stays at 70 degrees 24 hours a day, they're going to grow fast and be ready to transplant out in about three to four weeks at the most. The worst thing you do is leave celosia to be root bound in a plug tray because then it's going to stress it. It's going to set flower buds, and then there's usually no recovery from that. Um, so you want to get them planted out as soon as you can before they get root-bound in the tray. Like I said, three or four weeks at the most is usually enough time, much longer than that, to get root-bound. But celosia does like it warm. You don't want to plant it out in a hoop house that still gets cold at night, especially they can never freeze. Um, they're a hot, heat, heat, hot summer heat-loving plant. I could say that three times quick. Um, Celosia is like it really warm. So you don't want to plant those out until your nights are consistently in the mid-50s and warmer. Um, if you plant them out before that, they're just going to get stunted from the cold. Rebecca wants to know about ranunculus corms. Are they treated like dahlia bulbs and dig up each year? Or do you buy new each year? She's in zone 6A, the first year growing. Um, ranunculus corms, there's different ones. If you have some of the patented ones, um, which would be like the butterfly ranunculus, romance ranunculus, and some of the Italian ones. Those are patented, grown from tissue culture, and you're not allowed to save them for another year. So those you would just let them die in the bed or dig them up and throw them away because you're not allowed to, to reuse them. If it's the standard ones like the Amandine or Labelle that uh, we sell through Edney at Ball, um, those you can dig them up and save them. Um, you would dig them up in the fall, in the early summer when they've died back, store them warm and dry, and then plant them again in the fall the same way you did the first year by soaking them. Um, but you can save them if you want to. What I would recommend is buying some new ones every year to get some new colors. Uh, Pink Stem Farm wants to know, is it too late to order ranunculus for fall planting? Most definitely not. There's still lots of them available. Some of the high demand, um, either uh, butterfly or the romance ranunculus might be sold out, but there's still plenty of uh, anemones and ranunculus to order for this fall especially because they're still in the ground where they're growing either in um, France for the ranunculus or Israel for the anemones. They're still in the ground. There's still literally millions of them available from the growers. It all depends on um, if a color might sell out, but there's always going to be some anemones and ranunculus to order. But the sooner you do it, the better, so you get in line in case there's a shortage or not enough to fulfill all the orders that are placed. Um Earth and seeds, crates are full of planted tulips. What next best option for tulip cooler storage with bulbs on if not in crates? Consider cardboard box would inhibit airflow and mess with moisture retention, creative ideas. Um, so it sounds like you're growing the um, tulips in crates and you don't have any empty crates to store your tulips in the cooler as you harvest them. Because um, you know you want to harvest your tulips as soon as they show the color, get them in the cooler to basically stop them in the tracks so they don't get any more uh, ready and they don't bloom anymore until you actually take them out and sell them. Um, but I want to know what's the best option for cooling storage in the cooler uh, with the bulbs if they're not in the crate. Um, now the cardboard boxes would be fine. Um, just leave the tops open. Um, you know, you don't have to close the top off. Um, another thing that works really great if you have recycling in your neighborhood, just the recycling bins, those also work. It's just basically get something, a, a tote to hold and carry the bulbs or the flowers in. But if you put them in any kind of container, just make sure the top is open for air circulation. Uh, Chris says, crazy warm weather a few days this week in Iowa. Highs in the 70s, 80s with the lows in the 50s. Ranunculus in a hoop house and just got my shade cloth on, supposed to cool down by the weekend. Will this affect the growth since they don't like the warm weather? Um, well, Chris, it's really important that um, once growing ranunculus in a high tunnel, once the weather is above freezing at night, you don't close the tunnel at all. So in those days, and it was 70s and 80s, it should have been open 24 hours a day so that it really cools off at night. Um, you know, a lows in the 50s is going to cool it off. It's the warm soil that's going to um, cause the ranunculus to shut down and stop growing and go dormant. So as long as you can keep that soil cool, they'll keep growing. Um, two things to remember. It's always, if you're growing on any kind of fabric or plastic, to use white plastic because the black will actually increase the soil temperature. White keeps it cooler. And also something a lot of people don't think about is if when you go to irrigate, make sure the water is cold. 
Nothing's worse than if you have a hose that runs the length of the tunnels laying in the sun and it's, you know, 100 degrees temperature of that water and you water the ranunculus with that. So make sure you're always using cold water when you irrigate, uh, you know, drain out the hot water from the supply line and make sure you're watering with cold water. But just a couple of days in the 70s and 80s shouldn't have uh, affected them too much as long as you vented those days and still had to open at night to cool it. Uh, H. Moto Girl, I guess it says, um, put peony roots in containers last fall. They're coming up now. Should we plant them in their permanent home now or wait till fall? Definitely, if you can get them planted in the permanent place now, get them planted out in the field. Because the sooner they're in the field, the sooner they can get that bigger root system and um, just be a bigger, bulkier plant, possibly a year sooner. Um, growing a peony in a pot is fine if you're going to be selling with a potted plant, or if you obviously had to overwinter them because you couldn't get them planted last fall. But get them planted this spring, and you'll see uh, a much bigger plant than if you waited to um, plant them in the fall. Notice if you plant, take one of them plant in the field and put one right next to it in the pot, the one in the field is going to get much bigger than the ones that's still in the pot. Uh, Virginia Profrock, what is the best best method for treating white flies that are in your grove room? Well, white flies are a tricky one because um, they lay their eggs on the undersides of the leaves, so you usually don't see them till they get out of control. But a yellow sticky card, they work great for flying insects. Um, they will do it. Um, you might look and check under the leaves of your plants and find out which variety of plant they might be laying their legs, eggs on. Um, just like people, insects prefer certain plants for laying their eggs. You might find that they're all on your zinnias. So to get the zinnias out of the house and out of the grow room, that can make a big difference. So just check and see if you can find which leaves have the eggs on them, but then use a sticky card to catch the ones that are still there. You can always spray some kind of insecticide, but usually you don't want to be spraying stuff like that on little baby seedlings because they're really tender and sensitive to any kind of spray. Famous Amos, um, can you tell us how to choose whether to move trays of light if 50% have germinated, but the ones that have shot up seem leggy? Yeah, as soon as um, you see any small percentage of your seedlings germinating, they should be moved to the light. Um, even the big plug growers, once they've got, you know, if they have a tray of 200 plugs and 10 of them are sprouted, they move them out of that dark area. If it was in a dark spot or in the um, germination chamber, they move it out to the growing area. Because um, nothing's worse than stretched plants. That's the worst thing you want. Crooked letter roots. Once know how and when to fertilize peonies. I like to fertilize peonies now, this time of the year, um, early spring, just before they start to come out of the ground. And again, in... Uh, late summer, um, late July, early August, because that's when they're developing their new eyes and stems for next year. So you want to make sure they're, they're well fed both those times. So do it in usually March and July. Um, again, you should always do a soil test just in case you're really high on one uh, nutrient and you don't want to be adding more of that. But any balanced fertilizer like 10-10-10 will work fine for peonies. Um, so but do a soil test first, but then fertilize in March and July. And on the subject of peonies, it's always important to keep your um, peonies watered in July and August when they're making those new flower buds. It's so easy to pick them all in June when they're blooming, then forget about them because you're doing everything else on the farm and forget to water the peonies in the summer. But it's important to do that. Last year, this is Seed of Life Farm. Last year, I had a lot of sunflower plantings that turned out misshapen, would that be from extreme weather or, an or a possible issue with your soil? If it was the flowers that were misshapen, that's an insect. Um, it's the, I'm drawing a blank on the bug, it's a little black bud, bug that eats the flower bud when it's so small you don't even know what's happening and it's damaged and as the flower opens, those petals that were damaged will never open. So you kind of get like a half of a flower open or sometimes um, two thirds. And I think it may be the tan tarnished plant bug that does it, because the same thing happens to dahlias. The bud gets damaged when it's young. You don't see the damage until it opens up, and then you only have half a flower that blooms. Flowers on the fifth. Um, how many weeks before first fall frost do I start pre-sprouting ranunculus corms? Um, 
I'm hoping you're planning them into a high tunnel. Um, I'm not sure where you're located because they're always best inside of a high tunnel, even if you're in zone eight or nine. Um, and then if you get colder zones, you almost have to do them in high tunnels. Um, they usually want to get them in the pl planted in the tunnel about your last frost date. So figure about four to five weeks before that last frost date is where you want to start the soaking and pre-sprouting process. So you're planting out plants around your first frost date in the fall or even a week before. So they have time to get established before it gets cold. Ah, Becky Sage, what's the hardiest of the cool, hardy annuals? I need to kick some out of the unheated greenhouse. I'm not sure what you mean. Okay, so I'm, I'm thinking you've got some cold, hardy annuals started. They're in the, um, in the unheated greenhouse. You need more space. They have to go outside. Um, things like delphinium, if you got those started, um, larkspur, bachelor buttons, bells of Ireland, those all can be planted out now. The only thing is I would make sure that you protect them if you're taking them outside and planting them, then you get a hard freeze. By hard freeze, I mean something 30, 29 or 30 degrees or colder. Um, just put some row cover over them. Um, but yeah, pretty much any of the cold, hardy annuals Uh, so would there be any benefit to growing flower seedlings like some start microgreens in the dark and with weights on top till about day three? They say it will help strengthen the stems. Would it help with flowers? I, it's, I've never heard of growing things with a weight on top of them in the dark with microgreens. I don't see any reason to do that. Um, if you have weak stems, um, it's either because you have none of the flight and they're stretching to the light. Like someone said earlier, they had the seedlings that were stretching. Um, and the other thing, once you have seedlings that are tall enough to brush your hands across them or to blow on them, um, wind or brushing your hand across the top of the tray will stiffen up those stems. So I would do that way before I start growing in the dark with weights on top of them, because then you're going to get a stretched stem, which some of you growing microgreens are fine with a stretched weak stem because they're going to harvest it when it's three inches tall and sell it. You're trying to grow a, a plant that's going to be three feet tall. So I would rather see them grown in full light, blow on them, rub them with your hands to stiffen them up that way. Extra, extraordinary Choices, nice screen name. My purple sensation alliums are much smaller this year in year two. I'm wondering what I should do to keep blooms larger next season. I doubt the need dividing soon. Yeah, the alliums hardly ever need to be divided. Um, it could be that they um, didn't get enough water and you probably didn't fertilize them last year. So depending where you're at, you probably have the leaves just starting to show and have flowers sometime in late May. Make sure they're getting fertilized. And after you harvest the flower, make sure the plants are watered and cared for until they go dormant. Um, that's when they're regenerating the bulb for the next year. Harmony and blooms. How do you deal with aphids and thrips? They start to show on my ranunculus. Some of my anemone petals have brown spots, so they cause my aphids. I have horticulture oil on hand, but don't know exactly how to apply it. Appreciate your expertise. Um, well, aphids and thrips, the biggest thing with any crop you're growing is you have to be watching for insects because you want to see that you have aphids or thrips the day the first one is there. The worst thing to do is to not look closely at your flowers and your plants and find that they've been there for a month and they've taken over and you see that they're, you know, you look closely and there's just aphids all on the stems of the ranunculus or anemones 
but you should have caught it when you had two or three of them. Because when you find just two or three of them, sometimes you can just squish those with your finger, take that one flower, cut it and throw it away, get it out of the tunnel or the growing area to get rid of them. Um, thrips are a tough one to control because they're so small. There are some predatory insects that you can get. Um, I don't remember the name off the top of my head. You'd have to look them up. Um, but again, it's usually as a preventive, not a cure. The horticulture oil will take care of the aphids. Um, it's basically following instructions in the bottle. It's You mix with water, usually warm water. It just mixes better. Not hot water, but warm water. Um, and then you spray a very, very fine spray, almost like a fog. And that basically coats all the aphids um, in the oil and it kills them. Um, but the thrips will do the same thing. But the thrips usually down in the flowers and really hard to control. Um, that's why it's best to keep a really close eye on it. Sometimes with thrips, you just have to go with the chemical um, chemical control. Um, Jason wants to know, can we repeat the previous answer on the short anemones? Um, yes, it, anemones, the first one or two flowers that come up might be short, then they should be taller later, but it's really important they're getting enough water because without enough water, they can't push up stems of any height or uh, stem caliper you know, thickness. Um, and also you should have made sure you've been fertilizing your plants um, so they've got food to eat to produce those flowers. But the first couple of flowers are often small. It's the ones later on that come much taller. Um, make sure you're venting your tunnel at night. Keep it as cool as possible at night um, so they have time to grow tall. Uh, Steph is asking, my fall plant of peonies keep growing about a foot, then dying, then another will shoot up and then die back. The stems turn black and bend over and snap off. Any idea? Any idea if these will recover? If there were brand new peonies planted at last fall, it's possible that that eye that came up didn't have much root on it. Um, it's really hard to tell without seeing the root that you planted. But sometimes a peony will put up some, you know, you get a, a three to five eye peony, it'll put up five stems and one of those stems just turns black and dies. It's often because that section of root that that eye was on didn't have enough root to maintain that stem that came up. Um, your plants will most likely recover and be okay as long as it's not some kind of fungal problem. So if just a few of them here and there doing it, I wouldn't worry about it. If it's the entire bed, then I would worry about it possibly having some kind of fungus problem. Um, Ashley is her first time growing peonies. She has about a few about to bloom in zone 8A. When is the best time to harvest and where in the plant do you make the cut? Um, on peonies, you want to harvest right before it opens. So like if they're fully open, you missed them. Um, you can cut those for your soft, but you don't want to cut those and sell them because you lost a couple of days of vase life. You want to harvest peonies when the bud is really swollen. If you squeeze it, it feels like a stale marshmallow. And where do you cut? You cut the stem the length that you need. The worst thing you do is cut it at the ground and then cut off the last 18 inches so you don't need it. You usually start at the flower, go down, it's usually two or three leaves, cut right above a leaf because the more leaves you leave on the plant, the bigger and better that plant will be next year. So cut it when the peony bud is still closed, but about to open, nice soft marshmallow feel, and cut just above a leaf, but on no longer than you need it. And I think I've answered all the questions. Well, that's really convenient because it's one o'clock. Um, I hope I answered everybody's questions. Again, this is a weekly thing with the Gardener's Workshop. Every Wednesday at 12.30 Eastern time, they ask a flower farmer. It rotates through some different um, guest host, I guess you call us. And Lisa Ziegler is often here herself. Um, again, I'll have the online class I do with the Gardener's Workshop. Registration will be in June. If you're not on our wait list or email list, go to thegardenersworkshop.com and sign up there. Thegardenersworkshop.com, I'm sure you already know, is full of lots of great information, videos, tutorials, handouts, all kinds of stuff. You can just go and read for free to find out how to be a better cut flower farmer. So thanks everybody for joining and y'all have a great day.